What's up everybody? Welcome to the stack. Welcome back if you've been here before. I'm Neon Mushroom and today we've got some EDH Commander gameplay for you guys. This is going to be normal EDH Commander gameplay. We've been doing some Cal Time content. The budget games you guys saw last weekend, I thought they were pretty sweet. We've got some more content kind of like that coming very shortly, but for the middle of the work week here I thought we should upload just a normal video. So that's what we have for you guys here today. That's everything you should need to know. So let's take a look at who's playing what decks they decided to play, what opening hands they decided to keep, in addition to our normal upkeep stuff. As always, if you like this show or any of our other shows on YouTube, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps us out immensely. If you like our content and don't mind that extra mile, you can always support us over on Patreon, over at patreon.com backslash mtgthestack. Comment down below any of your thoughts and feelings, and we hope you enjoy the show. Okay, first up we have Calvin playing Animar, Soul of Elements. This is an old school commander that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, and this deck is built like most Animar decks. It wants to use Animar's static ability in order to cast a bunch of very large, powerful, synergistic creatures in the late game to overwhelm the entire table. Calvin has opted to keep a 7 card opener, including a Steam Vents, a Tropical Island, a Rootbound Crag, a Forest, a Palancron, Sages of the Anima, and the Ozolith. Next up we've got me, and I'll be playing my Gavi Nest Warden build. A lot of you that have been watching the channel for a while are probably familiar with this deck and know that it once had a budget cap of $150, but for the purposes of this video and some more content moving forward, I've removed the budget restriction, but it's still the same type of build. I want to use Gavi in conjunction with a bunch of old cycling spells to set up some wonky onboard combo to win the game by drawing my deck infinite times. I have also opted to keep a 7 card hand with a Forsake the Worldly, a Mage's Guile, Cloud of Fairies, Valiant Rescuer, a Basic Plains, Arid Mesa, and everybody's favorite Command Tower. Next up we have Aiden playing the deck he debuted for the Commander Legends gameplay video we did a couple months back. This is going to be his Kamal, Heart of Proza, and Jessica Thrice Reborn build, and this is a traditional Elf Ball build that wants to flood the board with Elves and win the game through combat damage, with the added caveat that if he ever gains access to infinite mana, both Jessica and Kamal can win the game pretty easily. Aiden is the third one to keep a 7 card opening hand, including Heroic Intervention, Lamor Tribe, the Lightning Greaves he always seems to have in like every game, Nature's Claim, and three basic forests. Finally we've got Jake back again with his Xeris the Writhing Storm build. This deck is actually pretty insane, it's going to use Xeris in conjunction with a bunch of wheels to have us all drawing a ton of cards so he makes a bunch of snakes. He wants to find ways to convert these snakes to mana and then continue to wheel, killing us with an impact tremors like effect or something like a goblin bombardment. Jake is the last one of us to keep a 7 card opener and it has a Phyrexian Altar, a Forest, a Polluted Delta, Soul Ring, Fires of Yavimaya, the Goblin Bombardment, and a Corvath's Fury. One, two, three, flip! Uh, oh, Calvin is first. You can do that for the inevitable whoever runs the Force and Collect deck. One's called Heimitz. Bitch, I have to edit this. That sucks! <laughs> <laughs> Calvin's going to start on a Tropical Island and tap for one to play the Ozolith, passing the turn to me. I'm going to draw and deploy an Arid Mesa, and with nothing else we'll go to Aiden's turn, where he'll play a basic forest, tap for green, and nature's claim the Ozolith. Ozolith. Nice! <laughs> okay. yeah. Aiden hasn't learned a fucking thing! <laughs> One, two, three, four. You do gain four life. Now I'll move to Jake's turn, he'll draw his card for turn, and play an Expedition Polluted Delta. With nothing else, Calvin will untap and play a Steam Vents tapped. Try to pass to me. Before he can, I'm going to fetch with my Arid Mesa. I'll search my library for a Regir and Triome, and then I'll untap and draw my card for turn. I'm going to deploy a Command Tower as my land for turn, tapping it for Colorless, and I'll play a Soul Ring. Then I'll tap for two, leaving one Colorless floating to play Valiant Rescuer, and I'll pass to Aiden. Aiden's going to deploy a Basic Forest as his land for turn, and tap two for the Lightning Greaves. And before he can pass to Jake, Jake will fetch. He's going to go search for a Ketria Triome, and then I'll untap and draw his card for turn. I'll play a basic forest, tapping it for green to play Soul Ring. Man, the nature claim seems real good right now. <laughs> and then a Kodama's Reach. Oh dear. With Kodama's Reach, he's going to search his library for a mountain and an island. The island will come into play tapped, and the mountain will go to hand, and I'll pass the turn back to Calvin. Calvin will draw his card for turn, play a Taiga, then I'll tap for three and play Animar, and pass the turn right back to me. I'm going to untap and draw my card for turn. I'll deploy a basic planes as my land for turn, tapping out to cast my commander, Gabi Nestwarden. 
Then I'll head into combat, and I'm going to turn my Valiant Rescuer sideways at Jake. He takes three damage. Then I'll cycle Mage's Guile for free, triggering both Gavi because I drew my second card, and my Valiant Rescuer because I cycled my first card for turn. Making a 2-2 two -two and a 1-1, one -one, I'll draw a card and pass. Iden will play a basic Forest as his land for turn, tapping for three to play a Lawmore Tribe. He'll immediately equip it with the boots, and wanting to stay on defense, he'll try to pass. Before he can, I'll cycle for Sake the Worldly, making a 1-1. One -one. I'll draw a card, and we'll pass the turn to Jake. He'll untap, draw his card for turn, and play a basic Mountain as his land for turn. Then he's going to tap for 5 mana, and play his commander, Xeris, the Writhing Storm. With nothing else, he'll pass the turn back to Calvin, who draws a card, plays a Rootbound Crag, and then he'll head into combat and attack me for 1. I can't block it, so I'll take 1 commander damage, and then we'll move to my turn. I'm going to draw my card, play a Cascade Bluffs as my land for turn, then I'll tap for 3 to play one of the most important cards in my deck, Astral Slide. After that point, I'm going to go into combat, and I'm going to turn everything but Gavi sideways at Calvin. He's going to drop down to 34. After that, we're going to move to Aiden's turn. He's going to draw and play a basic Forest as his land for turn. He'll tap for 2 and play Seeker of Skybreak. Then I'll put the Lightning Greaves on the Seeker. He doesn't have anything to do with the mana at the moment, so we'll pass the turn to Jake. He's going to play a Misty Rainforest, immediately fetching, dropping to 35. He's going to search his library for a Breeding Pool and shock it in, dropping to 33. After he's finished shuffling, he's going to head into combat and turn his commander sideways at Calvin. I got a very important question. What does Zeros do? So we both <laughs> draw three cards. Anytime one of you guys draws a card that's not the first card you draw on your draw step, I make a snake. Calvin takes three, they draw three, and Jake makes three snakes. Are we going to die here? <laughs> is, my. is that what's happening? <laughs> In his second main phase, Jake's going to tap for three mana and cast Fervor, which does resolve. Then he's going to tap for two more mana and try to play Cryptolith right. While that's on the stack, Calvin decides he needs to respond. I think I just want to slow it down. Yes. Oh, you've never actually died to this before. I've yeah. never actually it's, it's died. It's bad. It's real bad. This is in response to rights, right? Right, yeah. I'm going to bounce Fervor to your hand. Fervor is bounced back to hand, then Cryptolith Right will resolve. After that, I'm going to wizard cycle my Videlkin Aether Mage, which will trigger the slide, and I will slide out Jake's commander on his own end step. Then I'm going to cycle it for Archaeomancer, adding that to my hand, and I'll make a 1-1 one -one off of Valiant Rescuer. With nothing else, we'll pass back to Calvin's turn. He'll untap and draw his card for turn, then he's going to play a basic Forest as his land for turn. After that, he's going to play Peregrine Drake. That's going to resolve, so it's going to trigger, it's going to put a plus one plus one counter on his Animar, and untap all of his lands. Then he's going to tap for four mana in order to cast Sages of the Anima, which triggers Animar. Are you going to hit me or what, dude? I can't block it. I don't want to be your enemy. That's smart, because gonna... I'll kill you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying if I don't hit you, you won't kill me with combat next turn? Uh, you I can hit guarantee me? you, if you, you do won't... not hit me, I will not kill you with combat Wait. next turn. Wait. Re -clarifica <laughs> Wait, re clarification. If I don't hit you, you won't hit me with combat next turn. I tell you what, I can't make that deal. I'm not in a position <laughs> to make that deal. After some failed negotiations, Calvin's going to swing at me for 3, drop me to 35. Then I will cycle my Angel Song for free. That'll trigger my Valiant Rescuer and my Astral Slide, which I'll use to get rid of one of Jake's snakes. I'm going to draw my card, and then Jake Xeris will re-enter on Calvin's end step. After that, we're going to move to my turn. I'll play a basic island as my land for turn. Then I'll tap for 4 and play Archaeomancer, which triggers, and I'll get to buy back my Angel Song and add it to hand. Then I'm going to cycle the Angel Song for free, triggering my Astral Drift. I'm going to exile my Archaeomancer. Jake's going to make another snake when I draw a card, and I do forget about my Valiant Rescuer and my Gobby Triggers. Then at my end step, my Archaeomancer re-enters the battlefield. I'll buy back Angel Song and pass the turn to Aiden. He'll play a basic Forest as his land for turn. Then he's going to tap his more Elves for three green, untap it with the Seeker, tap it again for three more green. Then he's going to use some of his lands to make it a total of eight mana. Then he's going to drop a bomb. Oh, Vorniclix! Good God. <laughs> with Vorniclix resolved, he'll try to equip it with the boots. I have a response. I'll cycle Angel Song. This is going to have Jake making a snake, me making a human, and I'll try to exile his Vorniclix till end step. He's going to respond with Heroic Intervention, which is going to work. His Vorniclix will not be able to be exiled. I will draw my card, and then it's going to get equipped with the boots. With nothing else, we'll move to Jake's turn, where I'll untap, draw a card, and play Fiery Islet as his land for turn. Then he's going to tap for one red and two colorless, using a snake off of Cryptolith Right and the Soul Ring to cast Fervor. Then he's going to use three more snakes for three colorless mana to cast Astronaut's Altar, and he looks to Aiden as he heads into combat. Why though? Alright, fine. Hold okay. up. So that's okay. going to be three damage? Yeah. I mean, you're going to make three snakes and uh -huh. have access to how much mana? Six. Seven, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, well, thirteen. Well, yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it seems like nothing could go wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a response. 
I'm going to cycle Decree of Justice for free, and I'm going to have a bunch of triggers go on the stack. I'm going to get a 1-1 from the Valiant Rescuer, but mainly I'm going to use the Astral Slide to try to slide out Jake's Xeris. Now this is technically going to work, but he's going to rezone it and put it in the command zone. So that's going to go there, it's going to be commander tax next time he casts it, and then I'm going to draw my card off of the Decree of Justice and pass priority. Then Jake's going to sacrifice some snakes in his second main phase, tap for some more mana, and he's going to play that Xeris out of his command zone again. We'll use a face down card to designate mana that won't untap on his next untap step due to Voren clicks. Then he's going to try to cast Windfall. I have a response. I'm going to cycle my Forgotten Cave and use the slide trigger to try to slide out the Xeris. This is going to wind up working, but I get to make a Dino Cat because I drew my second card for this turn as well. Now that's going to be exiled, but once that's done, Calvin has a response as well. He's going to cast Fierce Guardianship for free to counter the Windfall. All that's going to happen. So on Jake's end step, Xeris re-enters the battlefield. Then we move to Calvin's turn, where he's going to trigger the Sages of Anima, and he's going to pick up an Evolution Sage and an Incubation Druid to its trigger. Then we'll move to his first main phase, where he'll play a basic forest. I'm telling you, he's that asking if for you a Astral Slide this, I will yeet him, and I will not yeet That's... you guys at the same time, because I don't have. I'd take that. I'm sorry, Jacob. That's <laughs> fine. To take that deal. That's understandable. <laughs> I don't want to die. You have a free cycle, right? Uh, so... I do, and this time it's going to be Cloud of Fairies. Mm -hmm. Um, so triggers one and two. I want to try to hit Xeris with the Astral Slide trigger. After we exile Xeris to the Astral Slide trigger, I'm going to draw my card off of Cycling and make my Human off of Valiant Rescuer. Then Calvin's going to tap for a whole bunch of mana and he's going to cast Palancron. Now this is going to wind up resolving, so he's going to trigger Animar, float his mana, then allow the Palancron trigger to resolve and it'll untap all of his lands. Apex Devastator? <laughs> Good <laughs> God! Hell. Oh. Oh, well. Yeah, hey, all right, all right. Sure. He might go off. Is this the first off, Devastator right? of the channel? I think it is. He still might go off. All right. ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Ba now, in the gameplay behind me, you'll see a bunch of illegal gameplay actions happen because the entire table was convinced that Cascade, 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 Cascade was a single effect as opposed to four distinct triggers. But there's so few gameplay actions left, and because the math works out anyways, that it doesn't really matter. We'll go through it together and Remember to read your reminder text, kids. Hardened Scales is the first spell revealed, which being on the battlefield means that Animar Soul of Elements will get an additional plus one plus one counter from his effect whenever another creature is cast. This will include the rest of the Cascade trigger line, Rattleclaw Mystic, Altered Ego, and Soul of the Harvest. Now, the Rattleclaw Mystic and Soul of the Harvest will be cast and resolved normally, but when the Altered Ego is cast, Adrian is going to cycle for free, triggering Astral Slide, and targeting Palancron to exile it until end of turn, so that the Altered Ego can't copy it. All of this resolves, but the Altered Ego will then enter the battlefield as a copy of Peregrine Drake, which means Calvin will untap 5 lands. After the Apex Devastator resolves, Calvin's going to use his newfound mana in order to cast Craterhoof Behemoth, which was in his hand anyways. This is going to give his board plus 8, plus 8, and Trample, which means the Animar Soul of Elements cannot be blocked by the Archaeomancer when it swings on Adrian for commander damage lethal, and the rest of his creatures swing onto Jake for normal damage lethal. This will functionally end Calvin's turn, as well as the match. Okay, hopefully that ending segment made sense to you guys. I think Calvin did a pretty good job explaining it. Um, one quick thing that you guys may have noticed, Calvin wasn't able to kill Aiden on that turn that he actually alpha strike both me and Jacob. That did not matter. Uh, Aiden had no way to come back into that game. That's why we kind of left that part out. It was a lot of time that turn and there were some mistakes made. So that's why you saw that explanation. Let's talk about how the game went from the least impactful player up to the most impactful player. And I think the only real way to go about that is to start with Aiden. Even though everyone kind of did some cool stuff this game, Aiden was just dropping elves card by card, playing mostly fair magic until he accelerated into a Warren Clicks, solid card, didn't affect the game a whole lot. Uh, I myself was cheating on mana quite a bit with all my free cycles and I had the Astral Drift or the Astral Slide in this case. So I was able to get away with not caring about that card too much. Um, Jake was cheating on mana and Calvin had an Animar deck so that that Warren Clicks wasn't gonna hold everyone back too far. It's just a pretty terrifying threat in and of itself. But other than that, he didn't do a whole lot. So we'll move right back over to I think it's a toss up between Jake and I, but I'm gonna say it was me because I was never threatening just winning the game. 
You guys may have not noticed this, but Jake was very close to just threatening winning the game outright. So we'll talk about me first, and all I can say is I played Valiant Rescuer and Gavi Nest Warden. It was sweet, I was able to generate a lot of tokens and start to cycle through my deck. I never found any of those key pieces except for the Astral Slide, and the Astral Slide does not let me go infinite. But for anyone, anyone who knows how the combo works, um, I need pieces like Escape Protocol and uh, Tectonic Reformation and maybe even new perspectives to Furious Angel's Insight. I need to start stapling these pieces together to get my engine going. We just never got there. I'll leave a link in the description, maybe a card, so you guys can see an example of Gavi actually doing that. Uh, then we've got Xerus. We've seen Xerus win on the channel before. Jake's deck is insane. And he had a ton of ways to make mana off of these extra snakes. He had Ashnod's Altar, or no, in this case, I think it was a Phyrexian Altar. And he had a, uh, what was it? The Cryptolith Rite, in addition to Fervor. And what happens here is I'll try to explain it as quickly as possible, but he plays so many wheel effects in his deck that once he's making mana off of the snakes, he'll use some snakes to make a wheel, to make a crap load more snakes because all of his opponents are filling their hands up. And then he can use those to keep wheeling. And he can continue to do this until he finds an impact tremors. And then he just needs to do it like two more times and he kills us with impact tremors, our perforos, our goblin bombardment damage triggers, and it's awful. And we've died to it before. Luckily, we didn't quite lose to it this game. I did a pretty good job of keeping him in check for most of the game. And then Calvin's the one who took advantage of that because at the end of the game, he said, oh, well, you can, uh, we're, uh, I'm gonna kill Jake and not you. And I was like, yeah, man, I believe you. And uh, so I set it up so he could kill him. It didn't matter. It turns out I didn't even need to set him up. He was gonna do it anyway. But uh, Calvin did the Animar thing where he kind of chained a bunch of cards into each other, made a whole bunch of damage. Um, the Animar was able to put me at just enough commander damage where the Alpha Strike actually killed me for almost exactly, I think it put me at 22 commander damage. And it's because all my creatures were white and Animar has pro white and pro black. Um, it, there was a point where I could have blocked the Archaeomancer, but it would not have saved my life, unfortunately. He got us. It was sweet. You've seen Animar win. You saw it win again here. You're probably going to see it win again in the future. I love that stupid old boomer commander. I think it's pretty sweet to watch on camera. That said, I think I've used enough of your time here at the wrap-up. That should be all I have for you guys today. Look forward to more Kaldheim content this weekend. We're pretty excited about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time.